Hello, I'm Deirdre McDonald. Today's Ebony Journal focuses on football, a family who plays it and an organization that chronicles it. An Atlanta family has produced six high school All-Americans, among them Ross Browner of the Cincinnati Bengals and Gerald Browner, who recently announced he will attend the University of Georgia. Community Affairs Director Cheryl Riley looks at how football has become a tradition for that family. Perhaps one of the greatest dreams of a mother with six sons is that all of them will graduate successfully from high school. For Julia Browner, this dream has materialized this year. She has graduated six sons who are all high school All-Americans in football. Now just how does a family consistently graduate persons who can excel on any college football team starting lineup? Well, for the Browners, the formula for success has been love, discipline, and a belief in self. The diamond earring has become the badge of this belief. A gift of love from Julia Browner, an energetic woman who has raised six boys, two girls, and is now parenting two growing youngsters. When they become men, full men, <laughs> that's when they get the ears, the one ear lobe pierced, the left ear lobe. So I don't know what the other tradition for anybody else, but that means that we, are men, we have men in the family now, <laughs> only one that doesn't have his ear pierced <laughs> right now. So all I have is men in the house. <laughs> Different African tribes, Indian tribes, and things like that, that symbolizes manhood, and plus an individualist, and I'm an individualist, and I felt if this small obstacle in my ear, you know, could keep somebody from liking me, they were looking for an excuse not to like me anyway, so, you know, it's like radar, keep small people awake. <laughs> Despite the tendency to lump them together as a football family phenomenon, each Browner brother has made a distinct contribution to the game. Jim Browner cites his interception fumble recovery for a 40-yard touchdown run against Michigan State as one of his most memorable plays as a defensive back at Notre Dame. The receiver was going out of the backfield and he was, you know, just caught the pass from the quarterback and uh, he had the ball like this up in the air, you know, and then I guess my hands, I had quick enough hands to grab the ball and spin around and pull it from him and ran 40 yards for a touchdown. That was a good thrill because it's not too many times a defensive uh, player gets to make a touchdown unless you get an interception. But that was called, uh, they didn't know what to call an interception or a fumble recovery, you know. So I like that. That was one of the best plays I had in college. The six foot one inch Browner is now pursuing karate at the Joe Perry studio after a brief stint in professional football. I guess you can get your aggressions out, you know, you can be aggressive at some times and passive at other, you, you know, you can attack, you got offense and you got defense. Uh, I have an average about February 5th and uh, from there I'll try to go on to try to eventually get ranked and things like that and uh, get a shot at the title, heavyweight uh, kickboxing. And then there's Willard, the only Browner to excel in college as an offensive player. A starting running back for Tulane, Notre Dame, and Utah, this Browner is also good at pitching no-hitters. Just something in me to say I can always, over, I can overpower this person. I think when you're up there pitching, you, you feel uh, you got complete control of the game. And the game doesn't start until you throw that baseball. Either, you, either they're going to knock it out, either they're going to get it hit or whatever. I didn't want them to do any. 19-year-old Keith is yet another individualist. At 6 foot 6 inches, he forms part of the dynamic Browner duo at the University of Southern California. A high school All-American in basketball, baseball, and football, he enjoys teaming up with brother Joey, a defensive back. Joey's a great player. He puts all his heart into his game and, you know, sometimes makes mistakes and he's still inside and think about it, but... Other than that, he's a great guy all around. I love him, you know. He loves me. We just take care of each other out there. Indelibly stamped in the minds of anyone knowing anything about current high school football is the name Gerald Browner, the family's most recent All-American. When I found out that uh, I was the number one draft, draft pick during the year, uh, I was, you know, I was walking towards... Uh, towards my uh, breakfast, you know, coming from my first practice. And a guy stopped me and I said, Gerald, you're number one, you know. And I said, well, I knew that anyway. <laughs> but, you know, I was just uh, messing around and I thought he was just playing with me. And I looked in there and it was in there. I was surprised, but, you know, uh, I was honored too. 
Honors have become a way of life for Ross Browner, Cincinnati Bengals defensive end and the eldest of the Browner brothers. A college standout at Notre Dame, Ross won the Outland Trophy as the nation's top lineman in 1976 and the Lombardi Trophy in 1977. In the recent AFC Championship game, he proved that he was worth his first round draft rating. And stays on the ground and he doesn't fool the Bengals. Ross Browner was the first man to make the hit. First down, San Diego, Muncie, fumbles, and I believe the Bengals have it. Yes! Four turnovers go to Cincinnati. Ross is the quiet, Cobra, you know, you have a, you look at a Cobra, a Cobra is, you know, it's, it's more or less as quiet about his movements. And then when it strikes, it strikes hard. My heart's in my mouth until he gets up off the ground, and I'm all right. And it just happened to be in the cold. Third and seven for five. Ross is just a, a, a person that, uh, that's a leader. And uh, he will show you, and he just, you know, he, I feel he, he will show you the way to success. If you just listen to him, you know. Uh, a lot of people say that he has a... Uh, uh, you know, a strong mouth. You know, I read these things in the paper. It's not his strong mouth. It's just his pride and his, uh, and his will to be a success. For Ross, playing in the Super Bowl was yet another confirmation of that success. Um, this was for the world. Uh, I think this is um, one that I haven't got in my record books and all my uh, achievements and my personal self. You know, I know that, you know, we've got one state high school championship. I got two national championships and uh, world champion would uh, just tee it all off. I think I, that was really something I'm after. One of the greatest Browner feats was having three brothers as starters on the Notre Dame football team in 1976. Together, Jim Willard and Ross formed a team that was unrivaled. Well, we played high school, uh, junior high school, and college together. Me and Ross and uh, Willard played in college with us, too, but me and Willard was in the same backfield in high school and stuff like that. But when all three of us played at Milcher Dame, that was one of the best experiences I ever felt. You know, I felt uh, togetherness, you know, some a power and positive force behind us. That positive attitude in large is a legacy of Jim Browner Sr., an Ohio steel worker who died at 49 of cancer. He left us uh, at least five years ago, but before he left, he made sure that every one of us would go through life on a positive attitude. And, uh, and that's the way he went through his life. That's why he has sons like he do now, you know, because he was a positive person. And um, we're positive just from him, being a, from him being an example for us. And the athletic ability? Well, Willard gives us a clue. My mother's, uh, she's a character in herself. Uh, she, she was always there. Uh, whatever we played, uh, whatever we ever done in our life, she was always there, more so than my father was. Um, I think a lot of our traits came from her. Uh, she's 5'10", um, she's a heavy set woman. Uh, she was more or less athletically Incline more or less than my father was. Uh, she played softball, kickball, all this type of thing with us. I played football, basketball, baseball, ran track. Anything the boys did, I could. I tried to do better. <laughs> if you believe within your heart, you'll know that no one can. The, the philosophy that sustains this tradition of success in athletics is... If you don't believe in yourself, nobody else will, so you have to believe you can do just about anything. The only person usually stopping somebody is yourself. I'm not doing it just to be a, a big head or nothing. I'm doing it because I had that extra talent in me and I'm using it to my ability and, and I'm not out there see who, who I please, really. I'm just see if I can please myself, my overall performance on and off the field. Having brothers like I have, uh, the success and winning will always be, always be in my blood. We have a, a great future plan, and, and I feel that the 80s will be for the Browner family. You know.
100% Wrong Club has been honoring the nation's black athletes for 47 years. Among those honored have been Joe Lewis, Wallace Francis, and of course, the Browners. Leon Odom tells us why this event has become so important to the Atlanta community. What do Marcus Allen and Hersha Walker have in common? Well, in addition to finishing one and two for the Heisman Trophy honors, they're both slated to be guests at the 100% Wrong Club's annual dinner. Joining me is Leon Odom, Public Relations Director for the event. Leon, just what is the 100% Wrong Club? The 100% Wrong Club was founded back in 1935 by the Atlanta Daily World, and this is the 47th year in, its, in the existence. Uh, the club originally started out with a bunch of armchair quarterbacks and pronosticating the games, and they saw a need back in those times that most of the black kids out of the predominantly black school were not getting any national recognition. So the guys, the founder of the clubs, decided that uh, it was time that we would honor some of the black athletes from predominantly black colleges. And then as the years went by, they began to attract more national recognition for national sports figures that just happened to be black. And in, 19, in the 1970s, they went away from that particular format and decided to honor athletes in general after integration. Just what does the 100% wrong mean? <laughs> well, when you get a bunch of guys together and all of them are pronosticating football games, uh, chances are nobody will come up with every pick every game right at every week. And that's originally uh, how the name got started, was the fact that so many people were getting the games wrong like uh, South Carolina State playing Tennessee State, uh, Grambling playing Morehouse, or whatever the case may be. The guy would pick, you know, the team to win and the team would lose, so he'd be wrong, 100% wrong. We have some athletes here in Atlanta, particularly uh, the Browner family, who uh, came to Atlanta, I believe, as a result of being honored at the 100% Brown Club. You know, that's uh, the absolute truth. What happened was Ross was our defensive lineman of the year out of Notre Dame. And I, thought, I think it was in our 44th annual All-Sports Jamboree when we brought Ross down. He was totally impressed with Leonard and the way that uh, the people here uh, were warm towards him that he moved his entire family to Atlanta. And that's the true story. Uh, that's just one of many. As you know, Hank Aaron is a member of our organization too and was uh, recently elected into the uh, Hall of Fame.